2012 Chevy Equinox with a four-cylinder Ecotec engine. Well, somebody's gonna hate me. I'll have to destroy this beautiful home. Somebody's gonna be homeless. All right. In my last video, I show you guys my secondary ignition probe that I made. I uh, been using this uh, Snap-on. And um, as, I said, as I mentioned in my first video, I'm going to uh, leave a link in the description. The uh, many times it works very well, but it's many many times it's too long. And uh, on this uh, on this engine, as you can see, on this side it's hitting the uh, purge valve, and then it's hitting the v v v uh, VTEC solenoids on another side. And if I flip it, it does the same thing. I just can't can get to it. You cannot put put it flat on my on my coils. And uh, so let's try one that I made. And so far, let me just find on my on my coils. I can put it on top. I can put it on the in front of it. Which are, now I have to see where it's going to pick up the best signal. And uh, something there. okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, let's see what signal we can get from this uh, from this device. Okay, here's the setup. I've got my uh, probe on top of the coils and it is connected to my uh, snap-on ignition cable. I got it hooked up to the ground and then uh, it's right here. I put I got a BNC connector and then that's my channel A. Channel B is going to be my sink. I just use my uh, Pico pedal, pedal probe and I just got it I just put it on the side of the coil here. This should be slot number one. I do not know my firing order. It doesn't really matter. I just want to see what kind of a signal we're going to have. So basically, you're going to have a second channel to get your sync, so you can get your, your, your firing order to identify cylinder that misfires. Okay, so let's go set up the scope and uh, see the waveform. Okay, so generally I put all of my channels at uh, 200 millivolts, and um, yeah, I got a 2 milliseconds per division. We will set the trigger on a channel number two. This is uh, my sink from my Pico pedal probe, and uh, but I never put trigger until I get my waveform on the screen. So, okay, let's start it up and uh, see the waveform. Okay, now you can see the ignition waveforms on the both channels. Now the blue channel, the signal is way, it's just uh, all across the screen, so I'm going to increase my voltage until I get the waveform that I can see. That's a little better. Now, as I said, I'm going to get my uh, trigger on a channel number two. I'm going to do the repeat on the channel B. And uh, this one I'm talking about, see, if, if I move it, now you're going to lose your, your, your signal. So don't set the trigger until you get the waveform on the, on the screen. There you go. I can maybe change it to 100 millivolts. Doing a little bit better. But this will work. So, okay. So we can see all four emission waveforms. One, two, three, four. Again, I don't know the firing order, but uh, anyhow, this car has 130,000 miles on it, and there's some hearts in the on the uh, firing line. You can see. Okay, I'm gonna increase to one volt. This is better. So you just have to play with your voltage, you know, to see what uh, you know what works the best. Which car is gonna be different? So let's go ahead and put this. Uh, Probe in front of the coils to see if that's going to give us a better waveform. No, I don't like it. Now I'm going to put it back on top. Okay, so uh, let's just zoom on in. Oh, this 
of our, our burn time. It's a lot of cost, I believe. We does need a new uh, spark plugs. And uh, here is well time, the power KV, the spark KV. This is your spark KV, this is your dwell, this is the power KV. Of course, the burn time, you can measure the burn time. It should be around 2 milliseconds, 2.4 milliseconds. And, uh, and you can go from, uh, you can check the burn time on all other, other cylinders. But this one here, you can see that this uh, burn time is jumping a little bit. Let's see, uh, let's see here. I can see it's right on this cylinder here that the burn time is really unstable. Of course, that can indicate the bad floods. And, uh, but on this one here as well, and there's a lot of, a lot of cost in this, uh, in this vapor and from the, the indicates, of course. Now, this car doesn't have any durability issues, but looking at the vapor and Thing like you know, it would not hurt to get uh, new plugs in this car. So and then, you know, with the mileage as well. So uh, anyhow, still useful waveforms. And uh, let's get the new plugs in, and then we'll repeat and see if it make any difference or not. The new plugs are in. These looks like original plugs, 130,000 miles on it. And this is what we replaced it. This is what the owner gave it to me. Pure this online, Denso, made in Japan, and. Uh, Okay, let's see the waveform. Yeah, made in Japan. Okay. Okay. Well, um, seems like the farming line is still unstable. I don't know what to make out of that. Now when you look at the uh, waveform from a, you know, the red traces from the Pico Pedal Pro versus, the, you know, my bar, they're pretty much the same. I don't see much of a difference in a, uh, you know, we can see it's a uh, very slight difference, but almost 90% the same. A little bit more hot than the, on the blue line versus the red line, but the red channel, but it's pretty much the same. And uh, so, anyhow, it's good to see a little bit nicer burn, burn line, but I don't know, it's kind of uh, interesting. Uh, the uh, the power KV is pretty stable, it stays the same. But the, uh, there's still a lot of, uh, lot of noise in the burn time. But, you know, the car runs fine now. So, I mean, it, I mean, it was okay even before it turned up, but uh, I was expecting a little bit better <coughs> signal, but it is what it is. Maybe on this car, and this car would be better to uh, take the coils out and put the adapters and uh, try to get the ignition ready from, straight from the uh, spark plug. Well, I decided to remove a uh, coil from uh, cylinder number four. I put the adapter in. I got my uh, inductive probe on, on the wire. And I also have a Pico pedal on the coil itself. So let's go ahead and compare these two signals to see if there are any difference in that. Okay, the uh, red channel is still my uh, Pico pedal, and uh, blue channel now is my ignition probe, and uh, we can see it pretty much the same actually. So we can still use our pedal as a uh, or a bar, you know, that I have to see all the all the waveforms. So uh, I think what happened, you know, this is actually a GDI engine, and I, I that might have to do something. And 
again, a car runs fine, so it has, has no reliability issues. So that's something maybe keep in mind for the GDI engine that, uh, you know, spark line is a little more unstable than on a non-GDI engine. So maybe due to a uh, higher, you know, compression of the, of the fuel that's injected in the system or um, the direct uh, gas injection. So, I don't know, but I mean, it's, it's still, it's still the same, you know, these things are all. And there are some differences, but for the most part, we can rely on that, on that pedal throw. It's interesting here, where the rail form actually is going in the opposite direction. Right here too. Now this is kind of normal way for normal burn time. It's a very, very unstable signal. Again, I think it has to do with some of the, for the GDI engine. Now it's something to keep in mind, you know, what kind of waveform would you expect from, uh, from these type of engines. So. It's not nice, I'm sorry, not, not nice and smooth uh, burn time. All right, here's what it is. Well, for the uh, last couple hours I'm trying to uh, get a good picture on the monitor to show you guys. Basically, you know, the problem with this car is, you know, it runs okay. I mean, it's a little sluggish. Actually, this is what happens. I didn't even try, I didn't even... It, drive this car because it needs the rear brakes and the tune-up and the customer never really complained about any any uh, durability issues but it is kind of a little slow and sluggish and uh, again we see a lot of turbulence in a cylinder now on, on our uh, on our spark line and uh, so I'm gonna try to show you guys this, this is the uh, I got my scope this is a tube that has actually a mirror at the, at the end so this is the best I can do. If you're gonna see a little bit of the, uh, I could use my other scope that I can actually turn it all the way, you know, like a 180 degrees. But we can only see the top of, kind of the bottom of the uh, intake valves, not the uh, top of the intake valves where the, the carbons are, 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 are carbon deposits. So let me. Uh, I'll do my best to. There it is. It's a lot of glare, but definitely this car will need intake cleaning. So, Alright, so let's see if I can. So it's, uh, this glare is killing me here. Now it's, it's a focus, it's not the best, of course. So now, okay, let's see here. Alright, so here's the. Uh, Here's the intake valve, the bottom of the intake valve, the one of them, and uh, you can see right in here. Okay, so at the, at the very bottom, you can see the huge carbon deposits right on top of the intake valve. Here's a stand, and as you can see, more, more deposits here as well. The car has under 30,000 miles on it, so, so you can see right there. So I wish I could have a better picture, but this is the best I can do. And this is the, uh, the valve seat here. So that's still okay. Now let's go back to the other one. 
Okay, oh, okay, so this is this scam. This is a scam. You can see the, the deposits on it as well. And this is the, uh, there's the edge of the valve. And then you can see uh, the deposits on top of the valve as well. So definitely a heavy deposits, carbon deposits. And that's what we see on our waveform. Our, uh, now this is the uh, uh, exhaust valve. It's closed. Another one here, so it's not like here again. I'm sorry for you know such a bad, bad picture, but I think it's a good okay. It's right there. And this is not this is not bad. So you can see here how much carbon is. Now, I wish I could actually find an injector. That's right there. There's an injector right there. Okay. Just the slide gets in the way, and I cannot, every time I move my scope, a bit too far, it's a little bit better maybe. Okay, so there's injector, valves here, and uh, it's down at the bottom of the valves. And, uh, you can see the pauses here. And the heavy heavy deposits on the all the way around. Okay, so definitely this car will need a uh, intake cleaning. I'm not sure who can do this in town. I'm sure some shops can do this. And uh, but anyway there was a uh, that's what causes all the turbulence on our in our cylinder. I just couldn't really figure out why am I having so much noise on my ignition waveform, it was just really, as you can see, and it's kind of interesting as, I'm comp as I compared the uh, pedal versus the uh, ignition clamp, where we had our ignition clamp on the wire itself, sometimes actually those, those waveforms are actually going in the opposite direction, so that was kind of interesting. Uh, but definitely, that's what needs to be done to this car. And, uh, but I think this is good uh, example how valuable ignition waveforms are and how much we can learn from it so all right guys that'll be it thank you so much and see you next time thank you Bye.